What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Recently, and as I'm sure many of you are aware, I made a video on the world's largest traveling inverted roller coaster and it seemed to do pretty well amongst my viewers. Because of this, I got curious and did some more research into inverts and came across one in South Africa that appeared to be just another common coaster, though I quickly learned I was definitely wrong. With a height of over 100 feet, 5 inversions, and a length of just under 2 minutes, this extremely rare coaster is one of 3 ever built by its manufacturer and has some pretty cool features about it, including the fact that this might be the rarest operating invert of all time. But what is this coaster, and what are its origins? This is the story of Gold Reef City's Anaconda. Giovanola Freres SA, situated in Monthe, Switzerland, was a well-known steel manufacturing company recognized for producing steel items such as electrical power plants, water storage tanks, pipelines, boilers, highway bridges, submarines, ski lifts, and other steel structures. Joseph Giovanola, CEO and founder, established the company in 1888 as a metal forging shop, and after he died in 1904, his sons took over the business, the eldest of them Joseph Jr., who was only 17 at the time. Because of this, the company had grown to a point where it needed a new facility, which was built in Monthe in 1930, and they stayed there for the next couple decades. However, it wasn't until the 1980s that Giovanola would join the ride and amusement market as a subcontractor for Intamin, another roller coaster manufacturer, and supply them with structural steel parts for roller coasters and other rides like swinging ships. Giovanola also designed and built entire rides themselves during this time, such as the Freefall, which was sold by Intamin for copyright reasons. In the meantime, Claude Mabillard and Walter Bolliger, two engineers for Giovanola at the time, created a new sort of roller coaster track system using a box beam spine in the mid-1980s that initially appeared on Intamin's Space Diver coaster. Only one was ever made, however, and sent to Six Flags Great America. Then, Shockwave opened up a year later and used the same box beam track. Eventually, Bolliger and Mabillard quit the corporation in 1987 and established their own firm, B&M. However, this didn't stop Giovanola, and given the knowledge they'd learned from their years with Intamin, developed their own strictly amusement design company in 1988 known as Giovanola Amusement Rides Worldwide. Both firms were situated in the Swiss town of Monte, and eventually, Bolliger and Mabillard proved more successful. Regardless, three roller coasters were sold during Giovanola's three-year existence, which were Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain, Titan at Six Flags Over Texas, and of course, Anaconda at Gold Reef City in South Africa. On the flip side, one of these coasters opened as their first and only invert in 1999, and is the one we're going to talk about today, Anaconda. With the track design similar to that of B&M, initially it had a pink track and green supports and would have a layout snaking through elaborately laid rockwork and other themed items. With five inversions, Anaconda's design is also very similar to that of the Batman clones, except that the ride changes after the second vertical loop when it goes into a helix followed by back-to-back -back corkscrews. In 2009, the entire coaster was painted orange, and in 2015, the entire thing a bright shade of green. But besides just a basic overview, there is a short but nonetheless cool history with the actual construction of the ride itself. When blueprints were first in the making prior to 1999, Giovanola actually proposed the coaster to a number of theme parks, however, Gold Reef City was the only one to accept. And so, construction began. But a number of problems arose during this time, and Giovanola quickly realized the complexity of taking on such a task was far more than they'd gotten themselves into. For example, the chain lift. It is said that, though not confirmed, Anaconda actually has or had a chain lift supplied by B&M due to Giovanola's inability to produce a reliable rotor. At the same time, they also ran into issues with seating for the coaster, and being an invert, each row was relatively closer than that of standard sit-down coasters. However, the problem was fixed before it ever opened to the public and presented no further issues. Though, just this year, one rider did complain of a fractured shin after supposedly getting their leg stuck in the back seat of the row in front of them. However, according to the park, the issue was a result of the rider not sitting properly in their seat and ignoring safety warnings. As of now, there is no apparent outcome from the case, but besides that and a few other minor issues, the coaster has operated relatively well and honestly looks pretty dang fun. From what I've heard too, it's smooth, intense, forceful, so maybe this is a reason to put South Africa on my list. That being said, this is about all I felt was worth sharing to you guys today about Anaconda and its manufacturer, but it does look pretty stinking fun. Like, that rock work and interaction with it is honestly super impressive. I just hope I'll get to Gold Reef City one day before it closes. Either way though, that was again just another short and brief history of an awesome coaster from a very special manufacturer, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, it's been a major pleasure creating new content for you guys, and I'd like to invite you to like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's content. I did quite a bit of research on this one as well, so it was cool to learn about Giovanola and Anaconda.
Feel free to catch up with us as well for those daily posts on Instagram. And until then, we will see you all there. See ya.